again, welcome, welcome, welcome to the kickoff for the 2024 uh, summer camp season. We're really, really excited to be offering a lot of cool stuff this year, lots of new things, and uh, we've got the team ready and uh, uh, can't wait to start talking about it. Uh, again, if you didn't see the link on our on our screen, there is a QR code there. Um, so scan that uh, before we go on to the next slide, and that'll get you uh, the latest copy of our leader's guide this year. And we are going to be referencing that a lot. Um, so that may be helpful to have handy um, as we go throughout the meeting tonight. So first things first, um, I did uh, already mention this, but for anybody who just joined us or is just joining in, we do have the cameras and the microphones turned off tonight just to limit the interruptions because um, we do have a lot of people on the call tonight. But um, use that chat box to ask questions. So if you have any questions, just send those out to the group, send them out to everybody, and we're going to go through those questions as they come up. Um, we'll probably take a look at the chat a couple times tonight, but at the end of the meeting, we're definitely going to go through the whole thing. And if there's anything in there question-wise, we'll uh, answer all those at the end of the meeting. So keep putting those in there, and we'll take a look at them as we get to them. Um, also, we're going to have some more QR codes tonight. So if you have a phone ready and handy, keep that next to you if you want to scan any of those codes, and you can take a look at some of the stuff that we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do a little bit of an introduction. Um, myself, Steve Porter here tonight. I'm the program support director um, out here at Camp Frontier. I uh, do a lot of behind the scenes office work and uh, different things. Um, also on the call tonight, we have Chuck Walker, our director of support services. Uh, Jeff Smarkle, our camp director. Uh, Brian Becker is not on the call tonight, but um, had some other meetings come up. Um, but he has been helping us a lot with logistics as well as our new Cub Adventure Camp program, which we'll highlight at the end of the meeting tonight. Uh, joining us also is Beth Young-Peter, our program director this year, and then John Slitsky, the program commissioner for this summer. Um, so we've got everybody on the call tonight to help answer those questions. We're really excited to have everyone. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about before we got into the Scouts BSA Summer Camp is we do have an event coming up um, that's gonna be a great event. We did one last year. It's a spring open house day event. This year it's going to be on April 13th and it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, at camp. So it's a day only event. We'll be doing some informational sessions for SPL, Scouts BSA Summer Camp, and for our new Cub Scout Adventure Camp for prospective parents and Cub Masters. It's a free event, includes a free lunch. Uh, we are going to have some activities available for the Scouts, um, both for Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA. And we're also in the works right now and pairing that with a few merit badge offerings as well. Um, so we're going to have some more information coming on that. Actually, I was just sending some emails back and forth between um, Chuck and with uh, Jeff a couple days ago. Um, so we have a lot of great things coming up for that. So keep looking at that website. Um, in the next week or so, I would anticipate having a whole lot of inf more information than what's already available there about it. Um, and if you have other questions, feel free to send me an email as well. And you can scan the link to find that website that we're going to continue to update. And then I'd like to turn it over to our camp director, Jeff Smarkle, and he's going to talk a little bit about new programs here at camp. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy evening and uh, this week. So a couple of things that we decided to do uh, for fun, enrichment, enlightenment, doing things a little differently. We are coming out with a gravity wagon, and we're going to use that for basketball. That's one of the items. The nice thing about that, it'll be portable. We can move it. Uh, another thing is we're going to get a giant volleyball to play with and uh, a tether court. So we're going to put in a, a tether court or two. With that being said, what's new for camp this year? Well, you've heard Steve mention it four times. I'm going to mention it twice in my little thing for program updates. We updated the leader's guide. We believe that it'll be more easy for everyone to use uh, pre-camp swim checks. What does that mean? Well, we'll find that in the new leader's guide. And it allows us that if, uh, to have a checkoff in place where we don't have to do everything on Sunday. Added safety merit badge this year. That's uh, something new that we uh, brought on board. We have a new game, a new program called Capture the Nalgene Tournament. That'll be ongoing. Also, a new night for uh, Root Beer Cantina. So instead of two nights in a row, a lot of the leaders said, hey, how about splitting it up? So we took your advice, and we're going to try it out to see if it works good. 
So next up we have, um, who do we contact and how do we contact? So pre-camp contact, let's get a hold of Chuck Walker, our director of uh, scouting services. And Chuck can be reached at chuck.walker at scouting.org. His uh, phone number is 419-459-3130. Also, we have Stephen Porter, uh, program support director at stephen.porter at scouting.org. And he's a 419-459-3102. And then there's myself, Jeff Smarple, at camp director. You can reach me at camp director at csrweb.org. This can all be found on page seven of our new leader's guide. For a complete listing of all of us. Next up, I have uh, Chuck Walker. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, like others, I, I want to thank everybody for choosing Camp Frontier for your summer camp. Uh, I know there's a lot of choices that are out there, and, and we do sincerely appreciate uh, your commitment to uh, Camp Frontier and to your scouts, bringing them, taking the time off from work, et cetera. So I wanted to just touch base quickly on two things. Uh, we're really excited about the summer camp team that we put together thus far. Uh, the great news is, is that uh, nearly all of our leadership positions are filled. We have a lot of great veteran staff returning. So we're very, very excited about the team that will be working with you and your scouts this summer. Uh, we still have uh, some openings remaining. And so if you have some of those good scouts in your troop, uh, counselors in training are age 14. It's a non-paid experience, usually a week or two, and they learn what it what it is to be on a summer camp staff. Uh, we have paid positions for age 15 on up, and uh, uh, some particular areas that we could use your help are aquatic staff. Uh, so that, that could be a BSA lifeguard or Red Cross uh, lifeguarding certifications. It could also just be a scout that has some good swimming abilities. And if, uh, if they do, we can put them through BSA lifeguard and help get them certified and they can be a great lifeguard for us this summer. We also need some maintenance folks who are 18 and above. Uh, we certainly need some help as always in the commissary with plan B food delivery and packing as well as uh, some meal prep type of things. But again, great news. We have some great veterans returning on our commissary staff uh, to lead the program. And so we're excited about that. And then lastly, uh, we also uh, have some program vacancies still open. So if you have those great scouts that you think would be uh, awesome summer camp staffers, encourage them to apply, psrweb.org backslash staff app. Lots of great resources. That site was totally updated for 2024. Um, so there's some great information about what it is to be on staff, what the experience is like, uh, online application, jobs boards, uh, position descriptions, tons of other information. Uh, may not be a scout in your unit. It might be a friend of one of your uh, children or one of your scouts. It might be a parent in your troop who has their summer off, the youngly retired. Uh, anybody that has a heart and has some enthusiasm and wants to work with kids, we'd love to have a conversation. So any help you can provide would be outstanding, and we thank you very much for that. Once we get closer to camp, I also want to talk about volunteering at camp. So uh, many of you leaders uh, come and you, you're looking for something to do the week that you're at camp. And I just want to reiterate, as we always do, we love uh, and welcome anyone that wants to volunteer. If you have a merit badge, uh, a skill, uh, something, a program area that you're simply passionate about and enjoy doing, and you would like to uh, help a staff member with whatever merit badge that may be for the week, uh, we would encourage you to speak up ahead of time. So we know that you're coming and uh, and that you're willing to help with uh, a certain merit badge or programs, and uh, we'll get you on a list uh, so we can uh, better support you in preparing for that experience when you get to camp. And then, uh, as always, we're going to have a few vacancies. We know that. That's just the world we live in today. And uh, we're going to do our best to limit how many vacancies we have, but uh, it's undoubtable that we'll have some needs that crop up crop up on a weekly basis um, as we go through the summer. And so for that, like last year, uh, and for those of you that weren't there last year, what we will do is we'll communicate you to you the week before you come to camp with any uh, vacancies that we have and uh, seek uh, any assistance that you'd be willing to provide. And then what we'll also do is get you syllabus and other material ahead of time 
so you can be as prepared as possible when you arrive at camp if you're going to help with a particular merit badge. So if you want to volunteer uh, before you come to camp and let us know you're coming and love to help out, you can reach out to me. Uh, we'll keep that list and then we'll be communicating with you the week prior to camp with what our uh, anticipated needs are going to be once you arrive. And uh, as in past years, we will have a program to help uh, offset your leader's fees if some of those jobs that you end up volunteering to do are uh, a little less uh, popular in nature, such as maybe helping with the uh, uh, commissary and, and plan B food pack out program. So uh, thank you for your, uh, again, thank you for coming to uh, Camp Frontier and we look forward to seeing you this summer. Awesome, thanks Chuck. All right, I'm gonna take over for a little bit. I'm gonna go over a lot of the logistics as far as registration and um, that kind of stuff. Um, for summer camp this year. So the first thing that I wanted to share with you were the camp fees and the deadlines. Um, camp fees are posted here. They're also posted online. Uh, there is an early bird fee and a regular fee for both in and out of council youth. These are the youth fees. Uh, and our early bird deadline is April 22nd this year. So if you pay for camp um, in full by April 22nd per spot, you get that at that early bird rate. And if you pay for any spots after that April 22nd deadline, they're at the regular rate. As you can see, we have pricing for all three of our meal plans, plan A, which is the dining hall meal plan, plan B, which is the uh, pack out plan, and plan C, where you would bring your own food entirely. A lot of this information is also listed on page 12 of the leader's guide. We do offer a free leader discount out at camp. Uh, we offer one free leader right off the bat, so every troop gets one free leader, and then we offer an additional free leader for every 10 scouts your troop brings. So if your troop brings 10, uh, to 19 scouts, they're going to get a second leader for free. If they hit that 20 mark, they'll get the third leader for free and so on. That's automatically calculated based on your numbers in the system. So as you begin to build those numbers in the system, it'll start giving you those discounts. Uh, we do have a credit card processing fee. So if you plan on paying with credit card online, there is a 2.5% processing fee. But if you want to do e-check, that is free to process online. So keep that in mind when you're paying for camp to avoid processing fees, do the e-check processing. You're also welcome to pay in person at the scout shop or by mail, which a lot of troops still do. If you do that, please use our fee transmittal form. We'll talk a little bit about where to find that later on. In the leader's guide, there's a link there. Um, there's also a link on the back page of that guide. Uh, we have a campership program out at camp. As of last year, we offer camperships to both in and out of council scouts. So if you have a scout who is in need of assistance for summer camp, please encourage them to apply for a campership. And we'll talk about this at the end where you can find that link on the website. Um, applications are due by April 15th and the submission starts on May 1st. So I'm sorry, not May 1st, March 1st. <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. So March 1st is when that opens up and then on April 15th is when that um, portal closes. So make sure that if you have scouts and parents who are interested, and submitting applications for those, they do it in that time frame. Uh, also, with the camp fees here are adult fees. Adult fees, you notice, don't have an early bird or a regular rate. They're always um, at the normal rate or the regular early bird rate. Um, so the weekly rates there are the discounted adult fees, and that's paid any time. So it doesn't matter when you register those adults. They're at the same price no matter what. We also have a daily rate for prorated leaders. So if you have leaders who are splitting a week, or maybe one who's just coming for a couple days out of the week, there's a daily rate that you can pay so you don't have to pay the entire fee. And I see a lot of questions coming through too, so we will definitely be looking at those um, uh, at the end of the meeting and we'll get all those answered, so keep the questions coming. As far as merit badge registration goes, we have merit badge registration that opens up online different times depending on the week that you're coming out to camp. Merit badge registration is your opportunity to put a name and merit badges towards the spots that you purchase online. So when you're purchasing spots by that early bird date, you're just purchasing a ticket to camp. Um, that ticket is yours once you purchase it. It is non-refundable, but you can transfer it between scout names. So if you have a scout who you purchased a spot for and they back out, but another scout decides to come, you can always trade the names out. Um, but once you purchase spots, they are yours. And then on these dates, those merit badge selection opening dates, that's when you can start putting names towards those spots. You may notice that the April 21st spot is one day before our early bird registration. You can go in and you can register names and you can register merit badges before payment. 
So if you want to go in and register on April 21st and then pay for those spots later on April 22nd, that's okay. Um, so registration when that opens is not um, reflective of payment. The amount you pay though depends on the time. So if you register for badges and sign people up after the April 22nd deadline, you'll be paying the regular fee. So make sure you're buying those spots ahead of time if you wanna get that early bird rate. The merit badge selections close a couple days before your pre-camp leaders meeting. So make sure that when you're doing registration, you get on when it opens and then you get all your changes made before it closes on those closing dates. And those dates are also on page 13 of the leader's guide. Uh, adult leadership at camp. So there are some requirements for some adult leaders out at camp. One of them is that they're currently youth protection trained. Um, another one that's new this year, regardless of how long you spend at camp, you must be a registered member of the Boy Scouts of America. So those things kind of go hand in hand, that youth protection training is required to be registered. Um, so you need to make sure that those that anybody coming out to camp, even if they're just coming for a day um, out to camp, they need to be registered with the VSA in some respect. It doesn't necessarily need to be with your unit, but it needs to be registered in current. Um, but most people coming out will be registered with your troop. Another thing that we like to talk about as well is the Mich Michigan Central Registry Background Clearance. You may wonder, why are we asking for this? We are out of Erie Shores Council, Toledo. Well, our camp specifically has property both in Michigan and in Ohio. And since we have property in Michigan, those laws apply. So Michigan has a separate registry uh, background check that's required for all youth serving organizations. So this is not a scout specific thing. This is a Michigan youth serving organization specific thing. Um, so in order to get your registry clearance, which must be done annually, you need to fill out a form, submit it to the state of Michigan, and they will send you your clearance back. We do not want the applications, we want the clearance forms that say you're good to go and your clearance form needs to be dated as of this year. So it needs to be as of January 1st, 2024 or later uh, to be accepted for this year's camping season. So if you did one last year, you need to do another one. Process is free, but it does take a little bit of time. So uh, we recommend that if you have any leaders in your troop or are planning on coming out to camp, have them just do it right now so that way they can have their clearance letters ready to go and that way you're not waiting on them because it can take up to a couple days or to up to a week um, to get them back depending on how you request them. Tip is request those via email because email seems to be the fastest way to get it back. If you request a paper mail form back, those seem to be taking longer. There is a spot on their generic form to have the stuff mailed to the camp or mailed to yourself. Please have it mailed to yourself, collect those for your troop and turn those in in one pile at your pre-camp leaders meeting or when you arrive at camp, please don't have them sent to the camp because when we get them, all we have is a name. And if you're not in the registration system yet, we have no idea what week you're coming, what troop you're with um, or where you go. So we, we have to figure out that here in the office. So it's better when you can turn them in as a troop and we can put that information on the pile. Um, so keep that in mind. If you need the application for that, the QR code is right there. Requirements for summer camp for forms in general, youth, we need to have that BSA health and medical record part A, B, and C, and it needs to be in date within the last year. Um, so it needs to be within a year of your time coming out to camp. Health and medical records are valid to the end of the month when they were signed a year out. So if, you have, if you're coming out to camp in June and your medical record was done in, um, if you're coming out in July and your medical record was done in June of last year, it will have been expired by that time. So you need to get a new one. Um, if you have questions about that, let me know. We also have an additional informed consent release agreement and authorization form, basically the exact same wording as part A of the health form, but we give your health forms back at the end of the week and we hold on to these release forms for extra records, specifically on the talent release and the authorization. We hold on to those here at camp and file them for seven years. So if you can fill that one out as well for both youth and adult participants, we'd love to have that as well. So that way we can file those away and have them on, on hand. Um, for adults, also looking for that BSA medical record, part ABC, the informed consent release agreement and authorization form we just talked about, the Michigan Central Registry clearance form, um, and then proof of BSA membership. So you do have to be registered with, a, uh, with the BSA in order to come out to camp. How can you prove that? Well, you can give us a copy of your charter, um, current charter with all your leaders' names on it and highlight those names, that works, or you can just make photocopies. Um, of individual registration cards that are in date, but they just need to be included with your paperwork when you turn it in at your pre-camp leaders meeting or when you arrive at camp. 
so that way we have that membership um, approved and we know that you want are registered and then two you also have your youth protection because your registration is current pre-camp leaders meeting so we have a pre-camp leaders meeting in toledo at our council office for every single week of camp you can see uh, the different weeks um, and the dates on that pre-camp leaders meeting dates chart um, to let you know when we'll be having yours and we'll have them at the Jadel Center in Sylvania. Uh, we do check-in at 6.15, and then we have our meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll send out information and reminders and emails about that. If you're far away and you have a really long drive to the council office, or if you're just not available, please just let us know. We have ability to work around that, and we can get you caught up um, not attending that meeting, but we will ask that you help us by turning in some forms early and things like that so we can get things checked off. Um, all things that we do at the pre camp leaders meeting, we take care of any outstanding fees, we pass out any early bird hats, which we'll talk about in just a second, uh, any t-shirt pre-orders, and we collect any forms that you have ready to go. So those health forms, Michigan clearance uh, forms, um, anything like that we'll collect ahead of time. We review health forms, anything that's turned in before you get to camp, so that way all you have to review and turn in when you get there is any ones that are still outstanding. Um, so that gets us through check-in a lot quicker. Uh, we'll have more information about that, and you can check out the Leaders Guide. There's a whole page on that in the Leaders Guide as well. Uh, just a reminder of vehicles in camp. Our camp doesn't allow vehicles past the parking lot, um, but if you do have somebody in your troop who's in need of mobility assistance, uh, there's a few options. Uh, they can uh, bring a bicycle, uh, electric scooter, or they can bring a golf cart, but that's only golf carts that you'd see on a golf course, no ATVs, gators, or anything like that, or uh, RTVs or anything like that. Um, so those things have to stay home, but if they wanna bring one of these with them, they're more than welcome to. We also have golf carts available at Camp Tourette for $200 for the week. Um, if you go to page 28 of the Leader's Guide or scan that QR code, you can get to the link for that online form. There's an online request form that you have to fill out that lets us know what your intentions are. Um, so fill it out regardless of what you're choosing, um, but there is a spot to request a camp cart. Uh, we do have limited availability on camp carts, so if you're planning on needing one of those, please make sure you request those early. Uh, also, with dietary restrictions and food allergies, uh, page 14 of the Leader's Guide and also at the link on the page there, um, we do have a special dietary program where we're able to provide some uh, uh, alternative foods um, for scouts who may have food allergies or dietary restrictions. You can find lists and information about that at the psrweb.org forward slash food allergies. Um, or on page 14 of the Leader's Guide or by scanning that code. Um, and that'll give you an idea on how we manage that out here at camp for our Plan A and Plan B units. Obviously, if you're coming to camp, bring your own food, that would be on the truth. 2025, so I know a lot of people aren't thinking about 2025 tonight because we're just kicking off 2024, but um, we do have early signups. So for 2025, if you like coming out to Camp Frontier and you're always gonna be coming out here, um, we have an option, and we started this last year, where you can uh, put a request in to renew the same week, same campsite. So if you're coming out and you always do Cluer week one, you're more than welcome to get on there, put that request in, and we'll renew that for you automatically. Um, so those requests are going to be available to do that starting on May 13th on our sign-up page online. Um, if you don't renew or if you'd like to do a different week or a different campsite, you need to wait till normal registration opening, and that opens for all troops, both in and out of council, on June 3rd of this year. So if you were signing up for camp late and uh, there was not a whole lot of sites to pick from and you definitely want to do a different site next year or you want to try for a different week, June 3rd is when that opens up for all of uh, the camp. So make sure that you get online or get in contact with us shortly after that time to get signed up. We also offer provisional campers. So if you have scouts in your troop that would like to come out to camp, or if you know of a scout who's not necessarily, uh, if their if um, troop's not coming out to camp and they still wanna to come to Camp Frontier, we will definitely take them. Um, we have a provisional uh, camper registration link there. The pricing for that is the plan A pricing and it's dependent on in or out of council um, and early bird applies to that as well. Um, Something that we also do is we have provisional host units out at camp. So one offer that I always put out at the meeting tonight and starting now is if you would like to be a provisional host unit out at camp and host either boys or girls in your troop campsite um, while you're there, 
we will offer a $100 discount off of your fees for anybody who gets paired with at least one camper. So I need at least one boys troop and one girls troop for every single week of camp. And I will take multiple troops, multiple weeks, and we'll just put them in the order that you apply. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, you can put that in the chat tonight. So you can let us know your troop number um, and whether you're interested in hosting for a boys or girls troop. Um, and if you're doing that, also try and let me know your week number as well so I can put that down. Um, if you're interested in doing this and you don't get it in the chat tonight, just send me an email and let me know or give me a call and I can get you on the list. But that's a $100 discount if we pair you with at least one person. We also offer a free SPL week. So if you have senior patrol leaders in your troop that are coming out to camp with your troop and they're going to be leading your troop and don't want to take merit badges while they're there, we offer a free week to come out additionally. Um, as a provisional uh, scout without having to pay anything, and you can take merit badges to your heart's content and enjoy the time with your provisional host troop. Uh, there's no fees involved for uh, coming out and doing that, um, except for if there's additional merit badger activity fees added on, but the fee for camp is waived. Um, something that I forgot to mention about those provisional host troops, as you guys are uh, saying that you're able to do that, we usually only look for A and B meal plan troops for that. So there is that one um, disclaimer there. Um, that's just because uh, it's hard for us to manage with a plan C troop who usually charges additional costs for their food. Um, so uh, unless the plan C troop is willing to cover the cost of that camper's food or whatever campers get paired with them, um, it would just be A or B. And if that is the case, let me know and we can talk details. There's my provisional host troops that sign up. Um, I, I jumped the gun on that one, but A and B troops only, I said, um, need one per camp and just keep putting them in the chat or send me an email and I'll take them in the order that they come. Something to talk about, um, early bird hats. We'll look at a picture of the early bird hats tonight on the website, but any scout and leader that signs up by the early bird deadline gets a free hat. Um, they look pretty snazzy, um, actually. I have the prototype tonight, so you guys can take a look at it. I forgot that I already had this on my desk. So these are the hats that we're going to be doing um, this year. It's Year of the Starfire. It's a great hat. It's navy and blue. Um, it's got a lot of the great logos on it. Um, it looks awesome. We'll take some pictures and show that um, as well on our website. If you have people who don't make it by that early bird deadline, you can purchase additional hats at $6 a hat. If you have them for sale, um, I'm sorry, you can purchase them for an additional $12 a hat. Um, but your early bird hats have the, have the option to be customized. So you have the option on your early bird hat to get your troop number and hometown on the back. That is an additional $6. The hat's free, but you can get them personalized. Those orders are due by April 22nd. And if you want to buy additional custom hats, they're $18. If you just want an extra hat, um, you can purchase those at Camp and the Trading Post for $12. And those are due on the same date as the early bird deadline, that April 22nd deadline. We also have pre-sale t-shirts. Um, they're additional um, to the to camp fees. You can purchase these for your troop. Every year we do a specific t-shirt just for that year. So we'll have our Year of the Starfire t-shirts ready to go. Um, you can get those standard or personalized if you're purchasing them. Either way, they're at a discounted rate, $2 off from what you see the prices of uh, in the trading post. So if you buy them early, we'll for sure have your size available and you can get them at a discounted rate. Those orders are also due for custom, standard, and personalized ones are all due April 22nd. Uh, if you don't get them by that date, you can always purchase them in the trading post at camp. We're going to be continuing the camp cash cards and care packages this year. So if you look at page 23, there's a link to both of these. We don't have the sales open online yet, but it's going to be similar to what we did last year. Care packages will be um, something that you can purchase ahead of time. So they'll uh, be purchased online and then we'll deliver them um, at mail call at camp. Um, and you can purchase them either ahead of time or while your scouts at camp, but we recommend purchasing them at least a week ahead. So that way they're good to go. Um, but if, if you purchase them by midweek of the week your scouts at camp, we can still get those turned around as well. Um, cash cards, same way, we recommend purchasing those ahead of time basically a, a loadable gift card that you can purchase that'll be passed out to your scout when they get to camp. Um, and it's a great way for them to keep all their money in one spot. Uh, while we cannot uh, replace a gift card that is lost, 
um, we can relocate it to its owner because we put the names on the gift cards. So if a gift card is found and turned in, um, we can find you in the system and we can get it back out to you. Um, so that's a little bit easier. I can't tell you how many times I see $20 bills that get lost all over camp. Um, and we appreciate your donation to the PSR camp, uh, camp fund. Um, but uh, most people don't come back for those and we can't return them because we don't know what, what names on them. So, um, so keep that in mind. Those will be available. We recommend sending this information out to your parents. Uh, we'll send out some emails as the stuff becomes available online. So that way you can send out that exact email to all your parents in the truth. All right. I think I have exhausted myself and everything that I wanted to talk about tonight. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to turn this over to uh, Beth, and I'd like to have her talk a little bit about the program offerings this summer. Thanks, Steve. Um, so we do have merit badges here at Camp Frontier. If you would look at your um, leader's guide from page 46 and 47, it's in the yellow section if you um, have it either on your computer or if you put it off in color, that is where the merit badges are broken down by area. So if you have a scout that says, oh my goodness, like I love ecology, that's the place for me, you can start singing the song now. Um, you can guide them to the ecology section. We also have um, in that section, it also shows when the times are offered and also the age requirements and also any prereqs that can be done before camp and also any additional costs that might be um, needed for that merit badge. It also is important for like, you might want to highlight or keep this page near you or handy dandy on, especially on Monday morning, first day of camp, because a lot of our merit badges, it's that way if you have a scout that says like, where's composite material, you can head them to direct them to handicrafts or scouting heritage. If they're taking that merit badge, you can direct them to COSA. But if you are a type of person that wants to see like, the times, then you can also look at the broken down by times for the merit badge. That's on page 58. So it has the same information, but it just has the merit badge offerings at 9, 10, 11, 2, and 3. And that way, um, and also by area, so that we can kind of see if once you're getting that schedule together for your scouts to kind of see when the different merit badges are offered. Our merit badges that I mentioned before are usually from 9, 10, 11, 2 o'clock and 3 p.m. They're usually about 45 to 50 minutes. We do have some merit badges that are two hours long and that shows in parentheses on the um, breakdown of page 46 and 47 and also page 58. But we usually allow the merit badges to be like 45 to 50 minutes. So that way the scouts have time to travel to their next area and maybe even sneak in a slushy at the trading post if they have time. Now you might be thinking that, um, might be asking yourself, I know you're on mute, but you might be asking yourself, what is there to do at camp besides 9 a.m. and 4 p.m.? And that's where um, you can do open area activities from 6 a.m. until 11 o'clock at night. We have activities that um, you can do in addition to merit badges. For example, we have the polar bear swim at the pool from 6 to 6.50. Something new this year, we're trying it out just to kind of see, maybe encourage more people to do polar bear swim, is to do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. So definitely keep make note of that so that we don't wake up on Monday morning at 6 a.m. for the polar bear swim, and that's gonna be on Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 6.50. There are also um, polar bear patches available at the trading post to purchase if you are, um, if you participated in that. We also have like even late at night, if you're a night owl, even if you're not taking the astronomy merit badge, I'd highly recommend venturing out to the astronomy hill from 10, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m for stargazing and we have experts that talk about our telescopes that we have and you can see really neat planets and stars and constellations weather permitting so hopefully you have lots of clear nights at camp but the open area time which again is on um which has with open areas which is on page 59 of the leader's guide it has lots of great things to enjoy the areas when you may not be taking merit badges, but a great opportunity to kind of explore the different areas that we have at camp. 
But we also have um, camp-wide activities, which is a great opportunity to kind of get the whole camp involved. We have something, I think every single night or every single day for the camp, but starting on Sunday, we have our opening campfire for um, at the amphitheater where the staff get together and put on skits and show videos and really get you guys pumped up for everyone's week at camp. On Monday, we have our water ball, which we take our um, fire truck by Lake McNichol and we take two different teams and they get fire hoses and they aim it towards a metallic disco ball that's attached to a wire and try to get it to the other team's pole. Um, this is a great opportunity to do that. It's on Monday night. Also, the new Handicrafts building has a great viewing area by the um, on the balcony to get pictures. And it's also dry, so if you want to see water ball and not get wet, you can always stand or sit um, by the Handicrafts building. For water ball, there is a sign-up sheet required. Um, I think that's going to be on Sunday nights at Frontier Headquarters right by the um, flag ceremony and the main parking lot and right where you check in at. So, and then also, as Jeff mentioned, our root beer cantina is gonna be on Tuesdays and Thursdays to kind of spread out the fun, not just Tuesdays for, um, to kind of spread out the fun for the whole week. So, and that's gonna be from 8.30 to 9.45 at the amphitheater where we also have our opening campfire. On Wednesdays, we're gonna have our OA call-out ceremony and also something I'm so excited about is our Capture the Nalgene tournament is also gonna be on Wednesdays. And then on Friday to kind of like um, celebrate our, our week at camp, we're gonna have our campfire. And this is gonna be, instead of just the staff putting on campfire skits, the troops will be having an opportunity to do um, songs and skits. And you'll sign up for that at um, SPL meetings. And it's also going to be an opportunity for the areas to present awards for different things that they might see that highlight their scouts that get highlighted throughout the week. For example, I know Handicrafts has this giant, beautiful picture of Bob Ross where they have people sign it. And I think the Aquatics has the Golden Bowie Award and also for Camp White Games. Um, the, those would be announced at the campfire. We also have a lot of our merit badges have great hands-on activities and lesson plans for um, to really get these scouts engaged. But we also have another thing for outputs, which are going to be on page 50 and 52 at, on the leader's guide. And we can't always do things in the classroom or under the dining fly. For example, I know in aviation, they get a chance to fly an airport or airplane. And for fire safety, they visit the Pioneer Village fire department and kind of take a tour of that and see what they do there. Um, some of our merit badge, some of our outposts though, are, at, are lo located at camp. For example, we have the starting place and the ATV and the camping and canoeing and fishing are located at camp, but our golf and aviation and fire safety um, merit badge or outposts are gonna be off camp. And so we do need adult leaders, not just that are the adult leaders to join in on, on the fun, always to be an extra set of eyes. Or if you have a passion, if you're looking at this outpost listing and you say, oh my goodness, you have a passion for camping or canoeing or fire safety, you can always um, volunteer to assist with, we always might need extra drivers or also for um, youth protection, we need males and females to, um, especially for camping overnight or for going on the outposts. And so you can also sign up for this or more information, again, are on page 50 and 52 of our leader's guide. And also you can sign up at the um, side of Frontier Headquarters. And I think I've joined the, all of the leadership staffs in saying that we're super excited to have, um, have y'all out here at camp. I think in like 100 days, I believe I saw the countdown last time I checked. So <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Russ. I appreciate that. Um, I've got a few more things to talk about tonight. One of them is a brief uh, discussion on our Cub Scout Adventure Camp. I know you guys are all troops. We'd love for you to share that with your feeder packs. Um, I'm also going to talk really briefly about an opportunity of a training that I'll be doing on online registration. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a website tour. So we'll be going online to PSR Web and we'll be looking at where you can find all this great information. 
I did want to take uh, one break, though, just to go over the questions right now to get those thumbs back up. Um, it looks like uh, we've got a few things in here, um, and Chuck's been uh, very helpful in answering some of these as well. Um, one of them was an alternative date for the spring open house. Uh, no, we will not have an alternative there, but um, let, let us know. There is ways to come out and visit camp. Um, I've got some ways um, where you can come out for a free camping weekend, um, and I'm going to show you that online um, once we get on there on the website. Um, the kickoff materials I'll show on the website as well. Um, there was a question about campership awards, and when we announced the deadline for those is April 15th, we try and get the decision stuff out the next week. Um, so anybody who applies for those, we send an email out to the parents and to the um, unit leaders so they know what funds are being awarded and that they're being applied to their accounts. Um, I had a question here. Uh, the 123 is the most updated leader's guide. Um, I believe it is. Um, I'll take a look and see. I don't remember the last time we put one up, but I believe that's the most updated one. But I'll show you how to take a look at the um, the updated list um, as it comes out. Um, can we pay in full during the open house? Yeah, if you guys want to make payments during the open house, um, let me know. Uh, I can definitely take you into the office and we can take care of that. If you want to do it that way, that works for us. Um, what time does merit badge registration open up? Uh, it opens up at 4 p.m on the open registration date. So that's when it opens up on your given week. Um, looks like not be available for the pre-camp leaders meeting um, due to a conflict in the schedule. Uh, yeah, definitely send us an email closer to the date or send one to our business manager once they get on board. Um, and we can reach out to you about all the paperwork stuff. Uh, do AOL crossovers get an early bird rate past April 22nd? Yes, uh, we will honor the early bird rate all the way up until I believe it's June 1st. Um, for any AOL crossovers who are coming into your troop. So we know that they cross over later and they may not be in the troop by April 22nd, or if they are, they may not know if they're going to camp. So if they decide by June 1st, we'll still honor that rate. Uh, you have to contact me in order to get that discount applied. So if you do have AOLs who crossed over, let me know and I'll get their names and I'll apply that to your account. Uh, thank you so much for everyone applying or uh, helping out with the provisional host troops. I've gotten a lot of you guys. I was writing them down while Beth was uh, talking. So I will uh, get those on the list and reach back out to you if uh, if and when we have any assignments made. Uh, looks like Chuck took care of that question about adult fees. Um, they are the same for in and out of council, so it does not matter, Adult, adults pay the same price. Uh, there was one other, I think. Uh, where can I find what campsite I'm assigned with? Um, I'll go over that online, um, but there's an easy way to check that when you're logged into your account. Um, merit badges, are they offered Monday through Friday at a specific time? Definitely. So we offer those uh, Monday through Friday, and there's up to five classes you can take. We do a 9, a 10, and an 11, and then a 2 and a 3 p.m. slot. Um, so you can take up to five merit badges, and you take the same one at those time slots throughout the Monday through Friday. Um, is it possible for a scout to get a merit badge class based on rank rather than age to allow them to work on Eagles? Um, so the way the registration system works is it is a first come first serve system. We do have age requirements um, on some of the badges. Some of the age requirements are um, set up because of a scout's ability to do the badge. So for example, we might have an age requirement of a 12 year old for shotgun because somebody younger than that um, may not be able to hold up a shotgun. We also have age requirements on a lot of our Eagle required, um, a lot of our citizenships and things like that, citizenship in the nation world have a 14 age limit, and that eliminates a lot of the younger scouts from being able to sign up for those and hold those classes, the, the pool of people trying to get into those classes is a lot smaller. Um, so that is one thing that we do, but it is based on age. Um, the uh, first come first serve system, there is a way where you can register people um, and you can register people like one at a time. So if you have some scouts who are working on them and they definitely need to get a certain badge, I have some tips and tricks I can share with you and we'll have a registration training on how to get those scouts registered before all the rest of them to make sure they get what they need. So definitely attend that registration training or watch the video and I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, is there a parents night? Uh, we are not offering a parents night, um, but if you do have uh, parents who wanna come out to camp, we highly recommend that they register with the BSA and come out as a leader. If they can only come for one or two nights, that's okay, we have that great prorated rate. Um, so if they just wanna come out um, for one day or something like that, they're more than welcome to. 
apparently everyone loves Chuck's beard and it is amazing. Chuck, there you go. Uh, you can sleep great at night knowing that you are the beard master. <laughs> um, we just talked about where to go to find your campsite assigned. I'll go over that. I'm going to answer parents night. Oh, look, we got a lot of stuff coming in that I didn't even see. Uh, my boys are looking at different merit badges about how long does it take to walk from one side to the other. Example, archery to whether it's furthest from archery. So uh, I'll show you a quick uh, chart that we have on our website um, about the uh, for the maps and directions and stuff. that will give you an idea of the distance between those areas. But to give you basically a, a good idea, um, there's really nothing in camp that's more than a mile away from point A to point B, and most of it's much less. I would definitely say that at a decent paced walk, you could make it from point A to P point B in five to seven minutes at your longest walk. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about where you can find that distance chart as well. Um, I got another provisional host route. I will definitely mark you guys down. Mm. Uh, another leader asked with the provisional host troop, what's our recourse if we run into behavioral issues with our provisional scouts? Um, I will say that we've been running this provisional host program for a good number of years, as long as I've been here, 20 some years, probably more. Um, we haven't had, that I know of, <laughs> any issues with that. But if you do have an issue, come up with that. Don't hesitate to reach out to the leadership team at camp staff. We have their parents' contact information, and we can definitely take care of that for you. Um, how many merit badges can a staff sign up for? Five. Uh, how many outpost offerings? Uh, they can sign up for as many as they want, but if they're offered at the same time, they'd have to pick one or the other. Um, will, troop with extra, will troops with extra adults have the opportunity to work kitchen and camp? Chuck talked a little bit about that at the beginning. Um, he'll be, we'll be sending out emails with that information. A week or two before your camp uh, time with information on what's available and what's open um, but it, we do still plan to offer some reimbursement for some of the uh, positions at camp volunteer wise um, self swim check so i had that on my list and i'm going to talk about that as well um, i was actually going over my list just to see if there was anything else that i didn't get yet um, and the swim checks was one of them so we are going to be offering for the first time ever um, pre-camp swim checks out at camp. Uh, the process that we're going to be using for this is the process that's used at all the national high adventure bases. So Sea Base, Summit, um, Northern Tier, uh, not necessarily Philmont. I don't think they have a pool there. Um, but all the rest of those where they have swimming opportunities um, have the ability and actually require that you turn in those uh, swim checks ahead of time. Um, so there is um, a little bit of information on that in the guide. We have a form you have to fill out. The form is word for word the same as the national form. Um, and it needs to be done by somebody um, who has a lifeguarding cert or is on the, the approved list. Um, there's a list of people that can give those tests. And it gives specific instructions on how they're to be administered. One-on-one um, -on -one with the youth, one, one, one youth per one guard. Um, and then you fill out that form, you sign off on it, the scoutmaster signs off on it, and you bring it to camp or turn it into your pre-camp leaders meeting, and you guys are good to go. You don't have to take swim checks at camp. Um, so that'll be there. We'll talk more about that, and um, I can uh, show you where that is on the website. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that and send some emails out as well with, with all that good stuff. Um, I think that was everything that was on my list. That swim check thing threw me off. Now I want to double check that there wasn't anything else that was on there that I didn't have. No, I, th I think we're good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start talking a little bit um, I'll, about the uh, real quick on the Arrow or Cub Scout Adventure Camp, the new camp that we're having, and then also that training for, um, opportunity. And then we'll go over the website, and then we'll answer any final questions and get you guys out of here tonight. So. Cub Scout Adventure Camp. We're offering a brand new uh, Cub Scout Adventure Camp this year. It's uh, right after our last week of camp. So we're offering six sessions of camp this year, and then we're offering the Cub Scout Adventure Camp by itself. Uh, it's very similar to our Arrow of Light Camp that we've offered for many, many years. Um, but this one is actually open to the entire pack. Um, so there's two sessions, a Sunday through a Wednesday and Wednesday through a Saturday. And those dates are there. Cost. We have an early bird and a regular rate for this camp, and then the leaders paid anytime, same rate. 
Um, same price for in and out of council. So if you're in and out of council, share this with your feeder pack. Let them know that we're offering a great Cub Scout opportunity this summer. Information, registration, download the leader's guide, all right there. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details on this because this is for Scouts BSA tonight, but I just wanted everyone to know that that resource is available and grab a picture of that or go to our website and we'll show you where to find that information. Last thing I wanted to talk about before we go over that website tour is the registration training session. So I do not have time tonight to show you everything on the website in terms of registration and give you all the tips and tricks, but I want to give an opportunity to do that. So uh, I've been doing this probably for four or five years now, probably ever since we went to online registration with the new tenor system. Um, and I get online in Zoom. And I show you basically how to register your unit, how to do merit badges, how to pay for camp, um, all the tips and tricks on registration to make sure that you get in and get out as quickly as possible. Um, it's a, I, I highly recommend doing that. I highly re recommend uh, attending it or watching the video. Uh, if you go to that link there, um, you can uh, register online. There's an RSVP and then we'll send out that Zoom link a little later on. But it's on March 27th at 7 p.m. And I will spend as much time as I need to with the entire group and we'll go over everything. We'll answer questions and have a great time. So keep that in mind that that is available um, and multiple people from the troop are welcome to attend. So lastly, let's go over that website tour. So one second. All right, pull this in here. So this is the Camp Frontier website. It's www.psrweb.org. And this is where you can find all your resources for summer camp. It's a great opportunity um, to uh, take a look at all the resources that we talked about tonight. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is where to find that leader's guide. So up here at the top page, you can see all the links. Scouts BSA summer camps where you want to go. This is where most of the stuff we talked about tonight is going to be. Um, if you haven't registered for summer camp yet, there's a registration link here. Leader's Guide is available here, and here's where you can download the latest copy. Um, we haven't made any adjustments to the Leader's Guide that I know of yet. If we make any changes to the guide, let's say like something changes on the class schedule or something changes with the program coming up, we'll list that information here and in what version it was changed. And if you click here to download it, you can notice the last revised date. Um, is always right here on the front cover. So yes, the 123-24 was the last uh, revised date. I think the only thing that I've changed since that date was a couple grammatical errors, um, but everything information-wise should be 100% good to go. I did wanna talk a little bit about the Leader's Guide. As you can see, if you've been coming out to camp for a while, the Leader's Guide looks new. Uh, it's not the typical stuff that we've had, and uh, we spent a long time uh, getting this uh, organized and we hope that you appreciate the order and structure. Some things to keep in mind that are pretty awesome is the table of contents is a cl clickable table of contents. So if you see things that you like, you can click there and it'll take you right to those pages. Same with um, the sidebars, we have sections now. Um, so if you're looking on planning for camp, health and safety, camp program and resources, those will take you right to those registration uh, or right to those section pages. Um, so they're quick links, and there's a lot of great quick links in the guide now um, with buttons and things. Like, for example, if you'd like to pay in person and you need to download that fee transmittal form, you can click that, and it'll download that form for you ready to go, and you can fill it out, print it off, and bring it in. Um, so that's some of the stuff that's um, available um, with that, um, with that leader's guide. Um, let me look at my list. Also on the website uh, on here is our fees and meal plans. So if you need a quick glance at that stuff, that's available here with those discounts and early bird um, rates. So if you need to just find that really quickly for your reference, it's there. Uh, another thing that's been redone is our forms and links page. So we've uh, rebuilt this to make it hopefully easier to use um, and organize it a little bit more. Uh, required summer camp forms are right at the top, so if you need to download that health and medical record, that informed release agreement, Michigan Central Registry, if you need to apply for that, the youth and adult required forms are right here. Next up is those registration forms, those fee, tra fee transmittal form for cash payments or check payments made at the scout shop or in person or mailed in, that's there. Need to order early bird hat customization or pre-sale t-shirts, we 
we have an online form where you can fill that out and pay with credit card, or if you'd like to pay with a check, you can download the paper form and fill it out. Uh, camperships, we talked about that. That's where that application link is. If you need to register a provisional camper, register a free SPL. Those are here too. We also have help videos available online. So I've recorded um, help videos with, with screen recordings on all the stuff. Um, so if you're interested in how to update your unit account or some of the stuff we'll go over in that registration training video, I have videos here on our YouTube page that you can watch for that. We do have some additional permission forms. So ATV has some forms and so does aviation. Those can get downloaded here. Something new that I created this year for planning for camp, and I'm really excited about are these planning for camp forms. Um, one of them is just the scout packing checklist. So this scout packing checklist would be one that you could print out and give to your scouts. We had one already, but this one's new and improved um, and hopefully it'll help you um, think about what to pack for your scout. So I'd recommend printing that out and giving it to your parents and scouts as a planning thing. But some other things that we have here, summer camp planning checklist and troop planning checklist. Um, so the summer camp planning checklist, um, this one is something just to rack your brain to make sure that you're prepared for camp. There's a spot for leaders. So here's what leaders should be doing as they're getting ready for camp. Parents, what should you be doing as you're getting ready for camp? Senior patrol leaders, what should you be doing as you're getting ready for camp? So those are some good things to read through and make sure that you have all those boxes checked. Um, also the troop packing checklist. Well, we know what scouts should bring to camp, but the troop might need to bring some stuff too. So here's some ideas on what you would wanna make sure you bring with you to camp. Paperwork wise, health and safety, campsite equipment, and then also a list of some of the campsite equipment that we can provide for you for free out at camp. So that's all listed here. Um, we talked about that unit swim classification. Uh, so if you're doing pre-camp swim checks, this is where you'd wanna do this. Um, this is, it looks a little different than the national form. We just made it look prettier so it matches our format. The words are identical to the national form. Um, I like our form better because it's prettier. Um, but here is where you would uh, fill out those names and then you would sign off on that. You'd have your person signing off and their qualification and training and then that unit leader signature right there as well. Information on how to conduct those tests, information on uh, how this form works are all right here. Who can do those tests? Right here. Um, so that is the, uh, the pre-camp swim check stuff. Uh, if you have that mobility assistance device request, if you need a golf cart or wanna bring a bike or a golf cart, you do that here. Some program forms available here if you're interested in those. Uh, also down here, we've got menus and food stuff. The menus are still 2023 menus. We're working with our food supplier to get those updated and we'll send out an email when we have 2024 up. Um, but every year, this is too early to tell on what's gonna be available through the food supplier. So as far as items and stuff, we'll probably know that in the next month or so. Um, so those will be updated and replaced here once those are ready. But if you'd like to look at last year's to get an idea of what we're usually offering, you can do that online. So there's that forms and links page. Another one I wanted to draw your attention to is the promotional materials page. So here is a great resource for your troop to go to if you want to have a troop promotional night at, at your troop meeting for summer camp. Um, you can get the leader's guide here. We do have a promotional video you can show to your scouts and parents. If you want to come out and visit camp, you can contact us or make a reservation online. We have free uh, tent camping, so regular camping for all units out at PSR. So if you wanna bring the troop out for a weekend, you can do it for free. Uh, we do also have cabins and facilities and things available for rent at cost, but the camping is always free to any unit who wants to come out and check us out. Uh, don't forget to check out our Facebook page. We post things there occasionally, and we always have different things going on on there. We also have a Frontier Adventures newsletter, which is an e-newsletter that you can subscribe to. We try and send that out about once a month, and it has information not only about summer camp updates, but also about um, year-round information and things that are going on here at camp. So it's a great newsletter. It only comes out once a month, so it's not gonna spam your inbox like crazy. Um, and it's a great resource to read through if you wanna subscribe to that. Lastly, we always have lots of extra camp stuff left over each summer. Usually it's hats or patches or wristbands or things like that. If you would like something to hand out to one of your, uh, to your troop during one of your promotional nights, you can click here and make a request for camp patches and swag, and we will send those to you in the mail for free. So you don't even have to pay for shipping, and you can pass those out at your next troop meeting. So 
So make sure you take advantage of that as well, and that's where you would do that. Um, we talked about the registration help page on the links page. Uh, if you're looking for 2025 registration, that'll be here at the registration page. Um, here's the early registration. So if you want to renew same campsite, same week, that opens May 13th. You click here, and the form will be here to do that. But it's not May 13th yet. And then uh, when 2025 reservations open, they'll be listed down here, um, and the 2024 ones will be gone. Um, so right now we still have 2024 reservations open. Below. But that's where you would find that. Uh, Cub Scout Adventure Camp, we talked about that. Same links and ideas for that. So that's all listed here. I'll let you guys explore that if you're interested. Uh, something else that Chuck talked about was working on camp staff. So the work on camp staff page has a really great description of what it's like to work on camp staff. A lot of different things, um, including salary, food, housing, some testimonials. There's a link at the top of the page to apply online. Uh, we're still accepting applications, and that's the way to get your name in the hat. If you're curious on what positions are open, periodically we update this job board to show what we're still looking for and what has already been filled. Um, so that's here on the um, website as well. And that's under the camp staff uh, link. Also, the online application is available right here off this main menu. Um, Frontier Adventures newsletter, we talked about that. Um, and that you can also find under the resources or on the main page is the subscribe button for the newsletter right here. And then I know somebody talked a little bit about um, distances, so I wanted to talk really quick about that. So if you click on the maps directions and distances chart, you can find a campsite distance chart which has information on how far each campsite is to the main areas in camp in miles. Um, so, for example, how far, if you're staying in Appleseed, you're 0.18 miles away from archery or 0.25 miles from rifle and so on. Also available is the program area to program area chart. So the question was, if somebody's out at archery, so we could say shooting sports archery, and they want to go to, let's say, the amphitheater, you could see that it's 0.72 miles away. So that'll give you an idea of where or how long something is in miles. Um, and we had a volunteer who went out and measured all that for us, and it took them quite a while. So we appreciate that resource. Um, so there, that's there as well. Um, I think I covered everything on the website that I promised I was going to cover. If I didn't, please put it in the chat again, so that way I can just see it and get to it. But that was what I had as far as the website goes. I'm going to go back to questions now and see what other questions we had come in after that. Uh, new guide is amazing. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. If you have any feedback about the guide and any ways that we can make it even better, please don't hesitate to give those to me so I can uh, put them in our, our feedback uh, folder. Um, are all the forms offered separately in the Leader's Guide writable PDFs? Um, so the forms on the forms page, I try and make sure that all of them are writable PDFs. I cannot answer that for sure that that's the case. If you find a form on the website that is not fillable um, and it's something that would be nice to be fillable, let me know and I'll get that updated. But I think I did most of them. I think they're good to go. Um, free tent camping in and out of council does not matter. So if you're out of council, you're welcome to come out and do free tent camping here at PSR. Um, we also offer that in Neoconda as well, I believe, in Toledo or other camps. Um, is there a list of available individuals we can contact to do the pre-camp swim check? So um, I don't have a list specifically. Most of the troops who are doing this um, have a contact that they're working with, but I know most of the troops call their local YMCA or similar organization and uh, ask that the guard if they can come over for a, a troop meeting and do the checks and then they just have a troop swim afterward. Um, so that's what most troops are doing. We do not have any staff who are able to do pre-camp swim checks on our camp staff. They're all out at camp and they're seasonal employees. Um, do you offer early night option check-in on Saturday? Uh, no, we do not offer early check-in. Um, we open our gates at 1230 on Sundays, so that's when we're able to get in and start checking. Um, but we do have a really great um, setup with pre-forms and also now with this new swim check policy. So check-in really is a is a streamlined process. We can get you in and out on Sunday really quickly, so you have plenty of time to set up that campsite. Um, new scouts, how to schedule rank work and fit into open slots and merit badges. 
Um, so something that uh, you might want to check out in the leader's guide, um, and I'm going to check for a page number for you right now, would be the starting place page, which is on page 43. Um, so if you have some scouts who want to work on rank advancement, we have a great starting place program. You don't have to register for that pre-register. That's just a show up um, class, and we have a list of opportunities where they can come and uh, take those courses. Um, actually, let me talk a little bit about that as well, um, because I do want to talk about how we run that operation. Um, so if you go in the leader's guide, it downloads. Um, we go down to, I think I said page 43. Yes, so our starting place has a couple different options. But if you would like to use our staff to do the teaching, we have two different tracks, a morning track and an afternoon track. They're identical in nature. The idea being that scouts can work on advancement either in the morning or the afternoon and the alternative time, take one or two merit badges. Um, so we recommend picking um, either the morning or the afternoon track. We offer things a la carte. You don't have to sign up for the entire thing. You can just choose to pick and choose what you'd like to go to, but you can see what requirements we're working on those days. Um, the reason being that a lot of scouts probably already crossed over and worked on half of these, and I would hate for them to sit through a class again on the same exact thing they already earned. Um, we want to keep them engaged at summer camp and have a great time their first year. So that way they're looking forward to returning for another year at the next year. Um, but you can choose and pick and choose, have them show up to these times and just show up at the time that it's taught and we'll get them in there. We don't sign off on requirements. We ask that you guys still do that, but you can drop them off at the class. We'll teach it and then they can show you the skill when they get back to the campsite. Um, you can also plan on using the starting place area like this. If you want to come down and just use all of our teaching supplies, you can come down anytime. You just need to provide your own instruction. So if you have a leader in your troop who likes to do all the instruction for those first year campers, um, come on down. We've got a lot of great displays, a lot of great um, knot tying and flag folding demonstrations, first aid supplies that you're welcome to use and teach it anytime the area is open. You don't have to follow the schedule if you provide your own instruction. So that's how that one works. Um, we are registered in Houston week one, about eight to 10 scouts. So they're asking about campsite sharing. Um, so we, we try and do campsite sharing and adjustments. Um, so the, the, the question is, do we, do we do shared campsites? Do we add additional sites for troops that are smaller? Um, yes, we do have, we do do that. Um, we keep that to the same um, gender. So we would never put a girl's troop in with a boy's troop or vice versa. Um, most of the time when we're looking at those shared units, it's in our larger field sites. Um, so those sites like Appleseed, Boyle, um, I'm sorry, Appleseed, Bowie, Boone, Carson, um, Butler, those type of sites. Um, and usually it's when we only have a troop of uh, around 10 people. Um, and we'll do a pairing that way. We we don't usually contact the troop before the pairing. Um, we do uh, pair people, but we make sure that when we're doing the pairing, we try and keep plenty of space in those campsites to make sure that there's not any overcrowding. Um, we typically don't do a whole lot of pairing on the platform site. Um, so Houston would would be a platform site um, unless unless there's a specific thing where a troop requests to be with another troop and that would be worked out. Usually that sharing happens on those field sites. We do let you know ahead of time. Um, so sometime um, in the next month or two, we'll send out some emails to anybody who's sharing um, with an opportunity to pass on their information to the other troop if they would like to have them try and reach out and contact them. We don't share emails with other people, so you can't say, hey, I'm sharing, what's their address, um, without their permission. But if you know you're sharing and you'd like to pass your information to the other troop, we can be that middleman and make that connection. And then they can choose to reach back out to you if they'd like to. Um, can council's units use pre-camp stream check form or do we still need to do stream checks when we arrive? Yes, out of council units can use the pre-camp stream check form as well. Uh, actually, that's who I think most of the people are going to be using it, our out of council unit. Um, a lot of councils have been doing pre-camp stream checks for quite a while and they already have these forms or things filled out and they're used to doing these. Um, so yes, uh, in or out of council does not matter. Um, and I see Chuck responded to that as well, thank you. Um, coming from Northeast Indiana, bringing two camp trailers to camp. Um, 
yes, you can have both trailers in the campsite. We do pull the trailers back for you since we don't allow vehicles back in the site. So our ranger staff take them from a lot in the front of camp and pull them back to your campsite. And then at the end of the week, we'll pick them up and put them back in that lot. So all you have to do is hitch it up and take off. It works really well and keeps traffic down back in camp. But if you show up with 10 trailers, we'll pull every single one of those back to the campsite for you. Um, don't take that as a challenge, though. <laughs> um, do we need to do pre-camp swim checks? No. Um, those are just if you don't want to do swim checks at camp. We'll still be doing the normal swim checks at camp when you arrive for anybody who does not come with a pre-check. Um, and John got that one for me as well. I should be looking at the answers before I look at the uh, question. You guys are helping us out so great. Um, Awesome. Uh, yep. Uh, are two person platform tents provided for all scouts? Oh, that's a great question. So one of the questions that um, somebody asked was, how do I tell what campsite I'm in? And I wanna show you guys that really quick. Um, so when you guys are getting online and you're on the Camp Frontier page, you'll log in up here. I'm gonna log in and I'm actually gonna log in as an administrator. Um, so it's going to look a little different on my end, but to give you an idea, um, let me pull up a registration. Let's see. I'm going to pick on uh, one of my troops. Let's do 244, and we'll pull up one of their registrations and take a look. So troop 244 is coming out to camp, and if they're logged in, this is what their registration is going to look like. When they log in, this is how it's going to look right when they log in, and their registration will be the first thing they can see to click on. You click on that, it'll open up their registration page, it'll show some information. I'm not going to go into details on this tonight. Do my registration training if you're interested. But for campsites, if you scroll down, you can find the campsite that you're assigned to. And if it does have platforms, it'll show the platforms and how many are there. Um, so this one has 11 platforms. Most of them have 16, but this one's a weird one. It has 11. Um, if it doesn't list platforms, it is a field site. It does not have the tents on the platforms. Um, those sites, you can either choose to bring your own tents or you can request tents um, uh, through us, but they're going to be set up with ropes and stakes without floors. Um, we also have cots available as well. And each one of them, if it is a platform tent, holds two people, and it has a cot with a mattress if it's a platform tent. If you have a platform site and you have more people than fit in your platforms, you're more than welcome to bring additional tents or request um, the ones from us, they just won't have floors or platforms below them. Um, uh, just a couple people attending camp, trying to get our campsite equipment back. We don't have a trailer. So we have, um, we have trailers in our, um, they're like uh, small trailer wagons that are in our, in our parking lot. So if you talk to your site guide or a uh, staff member when you arrive, you can load your stuff into one of these. They are about the size of like a car trunk or like the back of like a suburban or large SUV. We'll take the, we'll, we'll pull it back to your campsite and you can unload it there so you don't have to worry about getting all that stuff back, all that heavy stuff. Has anyone noticed there hasn't been a snowstorm the night of the kickoff since we moved to Zoom? I did. I was looking today and I just had a little bit of flurries, but every time we had it at Miaconda in person, there was always a snowstorm. So I don't miss that. I agree. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, other than YMCA lifeguards, are there other aquatics or degree requirements for the person signing off the form? So if you go back to that um, form, there should be a list there. And this is the list that National uses as well. So it's an aquatics instructor, BSA aquatics instructor, aquatics cup supervisor, BSA lifeguard, BSA swimming and water rescue, or other nationally recognized lifeguard cert. So Red Cross or something like that. So those are the people who can do those tests. Uh, thank you. I'm happy this webinar has been helpful. We always like feedback, so please let us know. Saw a question about hammock camping. Yes, hammocks are allowed. Um, we do ask that you practice leave no trace and try and keep the trees nice. There are specific campsites at camp that have some hammock camping available as well with poles. Um, and we're adding more of those as we get funding and time to put those in. Um, but yes, if you do want to bring a hammock, you're welcome to do it on the trees, but make sure you read the Leave No Trace hammock guidelines um, so that way you're not hurting the tree. All right. 
and I think I got everybody's question. If I did not get your question, I'll leave this open for a little while longer um, and just put it in the chat again. Um, it's just a long chat, so I may have missed something. Um, other than that, though, we really, really appreciate everyone coming out today um, for the kickoff. Um, we're excited for summer camp. We have our contact information if you have questions come up after the meeting. We will be taking the, this recording and putting it up online. Um, so check out for that. Anybody who's registered in camp, um, Oh, one last thing I wanted to, no, I'll show you that another time. I'm not worried about that. Just kidding. Um, so we'll put it up online. Um, I had a brain fart, sorry. Um, and then other than that, uh, have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you. Um, keep track of your email. We send things out via email um, to the registered contacts. So if you're registered for camp, we'll be sending stuff out to all those um, contacts there. Thanks so much, and we will see you this summer. I will stick on for a little while longer just to make sure there's no more questions that come up. But other than that, you guys are good to go. Uh, looks like I've got another question. Where will the recording be posted? Um, so we, if, uh, if you've been receiving our regular emails, uh, we'll be sending out a link, but it'll also be hosted on our um, YouTube page. Um, so if you actually, if you go to one second. So if you're on our website, um, just the psrweb.org, there's a link to our YouTube page down here at the bottom. Yep, there it is. And then it should show up sometime tomorrow when we get it um, put up for hosting. Also, those promo videos are available here and then past uh, registration trainings that I've done too. But when I do the new one, I'll put the new one up here as well. Uh, for leader programs, can you tell me where the Paddlecraft Safety, Swimming and Water Rescue, are they two separate trainings? Yeah, so the, um, the leader programs, um, let me open up that leader's guide again and show you. I believe that they're concurrent with each other, um, but I can show you where you can find descriptions and information on those. Um, so on page, I believe it's right down here. Leader programs, um, that leader training schedule is right here on page 53. Um, and then for individual descriptions, um, you were asking specifically about the Paddlecraft Safe, Paddlecraft Safety Swimming and Water Rescue. Um, so those are one course taught together. And those ones we do um, Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, you can register online for these ahead of time when you register for merit badges, or you can just show up to the class at camp, but we don't have a, a class size limit on any of the leader courses. Um, so just keep that in mind. But yep, that's there. Uh, I think that should be everything. I don't see any other questions coming through. So thank you so much for coming out tonight. And I think we're going to sign off.